Hi everybody, my name is Bohush, speaking for Videoblocks. I'm here to show you how simple it is to find amazing content on Videoblocks.com. Then we're going to walk through getting Videoblocks Media into Final Cut Pro 7 so you can easily add lots of production value and professionalism to your next video project. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here's what the Videoblocks website looks like. Now, sharp-eyed observers might notice that I'm using a PC for this portion of the tutorial, but it all works exactly the same way on your Mac. The Videoblocks website is actually a powerful search engine and media browser. So let's type in our username and password. Now that we've logged in, we can start searching and previewing media. You can use the search tool right up here, or by hitting the Browse button, you can kind of... Uh, see what's new and what's exciting and check out categories and this is a nice way to get started if you've never looked at video blocks before. Now there's a lot of royalty free content here and your subscription gives you access to all of it. There are no hidden fees later on. And what else is cool is that you can access your account from wherever you are. So you don't have to carry around bulky media, uh, nor do you have to pay for clips, you know, like in a DVD collection. Uh, that you won't ultimately use. You just download what you need and you can use it any way you want. Your video block subscription unlocks unlimited access to everything you find on the site. We'll search for some of the same clips that I used for this little project I made just using downloaded assets from video blocks. Okay, ha ha ha. So that's our little joke clip. Let's see what we've got in here. Looks like we have a kind of a newsroom set. We've got an animated graphic. The title came from the uh, editing program. Then we have, oh, we have some sort of flare wipe. We have slow motion footage of the TV falling and a lower third. And then a title again from our nonlinear editor. So we've got a couple clips to find. Let's get started by finding this uh, virtual newsroom set. Fortunately, searching through all this content is really easy. Every page on videoblocks.com has the search tool right here in the upper right. So we just enter in, let's say, newsroom. And notice there's a pull down where we can choose either search absolutely everything on the site or just video, just audio. So let's stick with just video and hit that little magnifying glass. And here are the newsroom files. Now what's cool is that this page is actually a media browser. So to get a preview of the clip, just hover your mouse over it and a little window will open up and actually show you an animated preview. And this is a great way to look through stuff very, very quickly. Okay, it looks like, uh, yeah, this is the one we used. So let's just uh, left click on it to get more details and to actually download. So here's what it looks like. You get a preview again that you can play back scrub through if you need to see something specific. You also get some details and even Facebook stuff. If you want to like it on Facebook or comment on it, uh, this is very useful as the site grows. You're going to get uh, peer reviews of each of these clips. So the red button is how you download and that's all you have to do is just click on it and you're downloading. Note underneath it you can see the actual specs of the clip. Now this is in HD it's at 1920 by 1080. It's 29.97 frames per second. It's in QuickTime format, .mov format. And all you have to do to download it is just click download. And I'll put it in a folder on my desktop, which I've entitled Video Blocks Downloads. So while that's downloading, let's, uh, let's look for the next footage that we need for our little demo clip, which was the uh, dropping slow motion television set. Now we can search for it using the search tool at the top of the page. But if you look at the left, there's this column of categories. And that's another way you can search. You can actually see a, a wider selection of similarly themed footage all at the same time. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the categories. We see there's a slow motion category. If we click on it, we see that breaking and smashing is one of the categories. Let's click on that and take a look. Aha. Okay, lots of stuff here. And as we scroll down, we can see there's a, uh, there's a slow motion old TV, uh, a little different television being done in by a sledgehammer. Let's uh, look at this clip right here. 
That's a different model of TV. Works well, though. Uh, let's see. Ah, there it is. Slow motion dropping and breaking. Front view. This is exactly the one we used. So let's, uh, let's click on this and take a look. Here's the page for this video clip. It gives you all the details we got before. But notice one important difference. This is available to download in two different formats. You can download it in MP4 or you can download it in MOV. Now the image size is the same. They're both full HD 1920 by 1080 video clips. The difference really is the file size. The MP4 is slightly more compressed and so it gets you a file size of only 28 megs, whereas the full MOV is 236 megs. Uh, so actually there's a big difference between those two. Visually, the MP4 is more compressed, so it's really more designed for work that's going to go out on the web, or uh, maybe you need to download a lot of clips so you can kind of experiment and preview. MP4 is great for that. If you're doing something a little more high profile, a little more high end, and you need the photo JPEG codec, well, the .mov is there as well. Just uh, be prepared to wait a little longer to download it, and of course, you'll need uh, a little extra space. Also, not all nonlinear editors play nice with MP4 or MOV. You'll just need to choose the format that's right for you. For our purposes, the MP4 is just great. So we're going to download it, and I want you to remember that it is full HD, 1920 by 1080. That's important to keep in mind if you're working at a different project size. Uh, we'll have an example of this a little bit later. So let's just click to download. While that's loading, it's time to go looking for sound and some music. Now, uh, we can use the search tool. We can use uh, audio has its own category browser. Let's, uh, let's just see what we get if we put in news. And we'll search just audio and click the magnifying glass. News and hover. And again, you get those great little previews. Oh, okay, that sounds so newsy. Uh, so let's click on that. That's the one we're going to use. Here's the page with more details about the audio clip we were just previewing. Uh, you can hear it again if you need to. And you're presented with two choices for downloading. You can download an MP3 or you can download a WAV file. Now, it's the same caveat as before. The MP3 is compressed to uh, give you a tiny file size, while the WAV is the full uncompressed audio clip. In my work, usually I'll use the MP3 if I'm previewing stuff, especially for a client, and then um, I'll go back and grab the wave because they're not that huge. You know, they're not going to eat up your life through all this downloading. Uh, for right now, let's just grab the MP3 and we'll download it to my machine. Okay, we've got a collection of downloaded video blocks clips in this folder on my desktop. So now it's time to fire up Final Cut Pro. Here we are in Final Cut Pro 7, ready to start a new project. So let's right click on this sequence to select our project size, our final output size. We're setting our output to be a 720 project. Now that's an image size of 1280 by 720 pixels. A great size for web output and, and broadcast. Now remember that project size, it's going to be important in a few minutes. So here's our empty project in Final Cut Pro 7. Earlier versions look and operate just about the same. You can import our downloaded files in a few different ways. You can right click in the project window and select import files from the menu, uh, then just navigate to the location where you downloaded your video blocks. You can also import a whole folder using the same menu. My favorite is the lazy man approach. You just go to the folder on your desktop where you were downloading all of your video blocks material. You just shift click everything you want to use and then simply drag those files right into the project window. Now you can start using video blocks just like any other video clip. Uh, but let's answer one question that comes up a lot and it's the image size question I alluded to earlier. Remember, everything we download from video blocks is a full 1080. But this project we created is at 720. Remember, that's 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. Now that becomes relevant when you drag the 1080 clip into a 720 timeline. You get this requester. And it says, attention, this clip does not match the sequence's settings or any of your sequence presses. Do you want to change the sequence to match the clip settings? 
Okay, long story short, Final Cut Pro 7 is asking whether you want to change the 720 project into a 1080 project to conform to the clip you're trying to add. Now, in my case, I don't want to change it. I want to output 720 video. I want to keep the existing settings. So with this requester, I'm going to say no. Okay, now this next part is important too. Depending on your settings and preferences, you'll either see the clip looking just like you expected it to, or it may appear zoomed in. Final Cut Pro has an option in the editing tab under user preferences that can automatically scale clips to match the timeline's output size. It's a checkbox and it says always scale clips to image size. If you have this option turned on, Final Cut will scale down your 1080 video blocks clip by about 30%, so you'll see the full image the way you expect it to. If you do not have this option checked, the video blocks clip will remain at 100% of its original size and it'll appear zoomed in. Well, and here's why. Think of it as if we were looking out a 720 window onto 1080 footage. Now the 1080 footage is larger than our window's view. If we want to see the whole video blocks clip, we need to scale it down by about 30% to fit it within the 720 window's view. To do that manually, you just double click on the clip to select it and then go into the basic motion panel. This is where you'll find the scale parameter and you can interactively adjust the size of the video blocks clip. You'll want to scale it to about 70%. And if you scale it down further, you're going to see edges of the clip, so just stick to 70 or more. Now, now there's a cool bonus there. If you want to recompose the shot, you can actually set the scale to, let's say, 80% or 90% or leave it full-sized. And that gives you wiggle room to actually move the shot around, and you're not losing any resolution. You're not losing any visual quality. You can move the guy over to the left some more to sort of de-emphasize him if you want. Uh, this gives you a lot of compositional flexibility, even in post. Okay, we've walked through the first steps you'll need to get started using video blocks. In a future video, we might take a detailed look at how I created this crazy clip using only video blocks content. But for now, what's important to remember from this video is how easy and, you know, kind of fun it is to browse on videoblocks.com using the built-in media browser. Uh, you also learned about the choices that you have as far as file formats when you're downloading. With Final Cut Pro 7, you can import content in pretty much any file format that you're going to find on Videoblocks.com. We were able to import by very simply dragging and dropping, no muss, no fuss. We also know what to do if the project size doesn't match the size of our downloaded video blocks. If the Always Scale Clips to Image Size Preferences item isn't turned on, we just manually resize the video blocks media to fit our 720p project. When it's time to export your finished video, it'll look extra pro thanks to all of the media you downloaded from Videoblocks. Now that you've seen how easy it is to get Videoblocks footage and music into your project, here's the fun part. Just keep exploring the vast collections at Videoblocks.com. You can find the perfect piece to finish a project you're working on now, or get inspired when you're starting something new. Try searching for macro, slow motion, or time-lapse next time you're looking for something really unique to add to your next video masterpiece. And also, don't forget to check out content.videoblocks.com for more ideas on how to get creative with video blocks. My name is Bahush. Thanks for watching.